Hi there, you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky and this is our friend Bear who loves reading along with you. Bear has a question for you. Do you have a favorite stuffed animal? Many yeses, Bear. Well, Bear's asking, how would you feel if you lost it one day? Hmm, a little worried? Well, Eddie has lost his favorite teddy bear in the woods. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see if we can help Eddie find his teddy bear. Where's my teddy? By Jez Albura. Eddie's off to find his teddy. Eddie's Teddy's name is Freddy. He lost him in the woods somewhere. It's dark and horrible in there. Help, said Eddie. I'm scared already. I want my bed. I want my Teddy. He tiptoed on and on until something made him stop quite still. Look out, he thought. There's something there. What's that? A giant teddy bear. Is it Freddy? said Eddie. What a surprise. How did you get to be this size? You're too big to huddle and cuddle, he says. And I'll never fit both of us into my bed. Then out of the darkness, clearer and clearer, the sound of sobbing came nearer and nearer. Soon the whole woods could hear the voice bawl. How did you get to be tiny and small? You're too small to huddle and cuddle, it said. And you'll only get lost in my giant-sized bed. It was a gigantic bear and a tiny teddy stomping toward the giant Teddy and Eddie. <gasps> My Ted! gasped the bear. A bear! screamed Eddie. A boy! yelled the bear. My teddy! cried Eddie. Then they ran and they ran through the dark woods back to their homes as fast as they could. All the way back to their snuggly beds where they huddled and cuddled their own little Teds. Bear is wondering, why do you think Eddie and the gigantic bear ran home fast? Hmm, do you think Eddie trusted the gigantic bear? No. Did the gigantic bear trust Eddie? No. <laughs> so do you think they couldn't wait to get their teddy bears back home to safety? Many yeses. Well, Bear is happy both teddies are home again. Are you? <laughs> He's also hoping you come back soon for more Lost and Found adventures. Bye for now. Please subscribe.
Hi there, you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky and this is our friend Bear who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Do you know anyone who would swallow some books? They're saying that's not a smart thing to do, Bear. <laughs> well, Bear says he's heard of an old lady who did swallow some. Here she is right now. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see what will happen after she swallows some books. There was an old lady who swallowed some books by Lucille Calandro. There was an old lady who swallowed some books. I don't know why she swallowed those books but she didn't get any looks. There was an old lady who swallowed a pen. She was happy again when she swallowed that pen. She swallowed the pen to write in the books. I don't know why she swallowed the books, but she didn't get any looks. There was an old lady who swallowed a pencil case without leaving a trace. She swallowed that pencil case. She swallowed the pencil case to hold the pen. She swallowed the pen to write in the books. I don't know why she swallowed the books, but she didn't get any looks. There was an old lady who swallowed a ruler. She couldn't look cooler swallowing that ruler. She swallowed the ruler to measure the pencil case. She swallowed the pencil case to hold the pen. She swallowed the pen to write in the books. I don't know why she swallowed the books but she didn't get any looks. There was an old lady who swallowed a folder. She didn't feel any older when she swallowed the folder. She swallowed the folder to protect the ruler. She swallowed the ruler to measure the pencil case. She swallowed the pencil case to hold the pen. She swallowed the pen to write in the books. I don't know why she swallowed the books, but she didn't get any looks. There was an old lady who swallowed some chalk. She didn't balk when she swallowed that chalk. She swallowed the chalk to decorate the folder. She swallowed the folder to protect the ruler. She swallowed the ruler to measure the pencil case. She swallowed the pencil case to hold the pen. She swallowed the pen to write in the books. I don't know why she swallowed the books, but she didn't get any looks. There was an old lady who swallowed a bag. She didn't brag when she swallowed that bag. The old lady didn't fuss when around the corner came a big yellow school bus. She started a cheer that she could not hold back and out popped her brand new backpack. Have a great school year. Bear's wondering, do you think the old lady swallowed those books 
so she could go to school with you? Hmm. Well, <laughs> Bear also wonders why she didn't get any looks. How would you have looked at her? <laughs> well, Bear also hopes you come back soon for more tall tales. Bye for now. Please subscribe. Hi there! You found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky, and this is our friend Bear, who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Do you ever draw something and no one can really tell what it is? Sometimes? <laughs> well, Scribble knows he's a Scribble, and he hopes that's okay when he tries to make friends. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see what happens when Scribble meets his first drawing and wants to play. I'm Not Just a Scribble by Diane Alber. This is a story about Scribble, whose lines would cross and wiggle Tiny loops would start him small. Bigger swirls would make him tall. He could be shades of green or baby blue, even crazy colors. He loved them too. Choosing bright colors made him feel free. You never knew which one he would be. Then one day, Scribble took a short walk where he found a house and stopped to talk. Hello, said Scribble. It's such a great day. I thought I'd come over and we could all play. The house never saw anything like Scribble before, but he was curious enough to find out a bit more. So even though he was grumpy and didn't want to play, he still managed to grunt. What are you anyway? Scribble was confused and didn't know what to say. So he said to the house, I'm just a scribble. Is that okay? It's not okay, said the house. You don't look right. Your lines aren't straight, and your colors are too bright. But color is fun, Scribble said. I can show you why. Just give me a chance. Please let me try. No, said the house. You cannot stay. You're nothing like me. Now go away. Hearing those words made Scribble so sad. A tear ran down his face. He felt really bad. But I won't be upset, he proclaimed that day. So? He changed his colors and went on his way. He continued his walk and soon found the sun. Along with the clouds, they could all have some fun. But the sun saw him coming and told him to stop. Your lines are too messy and we don't have a mop. Turn around, little scribble. He went on to say, go back to your home. Please, just go away. But you're not being nice, 
Scribble shouted, quite mad. The fact that I'm different doesn't make me so bad. My colors are special and my lines are just fine. If you'd give me a chance, we could have a great time. Should we ask him to play? They huddled to discuss. It's fun with more friends. It's usually just us. And although they were worried this wouldn't work out, being mean to Scribble wasn't what they were about. Scribble was surprised at what he saw the next day. All the drawings were there and they wanted to play. Even Rainbow showed up and he never came by. He was standing right there near the sun in the sky. We're so sorry, said the clouds as they held back their tears. Please come play said the house. We haven't had fun in years. I forgive you, Scribble shouted as he did a happy dance. They were so grateful he gave them another chance. Scribble gathered up his colors and played with everyone. Blue, purple, green, and yellow. It was all so much fun. Look what they created when they finally came together. The art was so beautiful and it was better than ever. Here's wondering, did the drawings finally give Scribble a chance because he was different and interesting? Yes. Bear says Scribble also never gave up on himself. Do you agree? Bear is also asking if you want to have friends, do you have to be good at forgiving them? Hmm. Well, Bear hopes you come back soon for more adventures in believing in yourself and giving others a chance to. Bye for now. Please subscribe. Hi there, you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky, and this is our friend Bear who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Do you think children want to know that their moms and dads will come back soon? Yes. Well, Bear says he knows some owls who feel a little afraid because they wish their mother would come back now. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and hear what the owl babies are thinking when they don't see their mother yet. Owl Babies by Martin Waddell. Once there were three baby owls, Sarah and Percy and Bill. They lived in a hole in the trunk of a tree with their owl mother. The hole had twigs and leaves and owl feathers in it. It was their home. <coughs> One night they woke up and their owl mother was gone. Where's mommy? asked Sarah. Oh my goodness, said Percy. I want my mommy, said Bill. The owl babies thought. All owls think a lot. I think she's gone hunting, said Sarah. To get us our food, said Percy. I want my mommy, said Bill. But their owl mother didn't come. 
the baby owls came out of their house and they sat on the tree and waited. A big branch for Sarah, a small branch for Percy, and an old piece of ivy for Bill. She'll be back, said Sarah. Back soon, said Percy. I want my mommy, said Bill. It was dark in the wood and they had to be brave for things moved all around them. She'll bring us mice and things that are nice, said Sarah. I suppose so, said Percy. I want my mommy, said Bill. They sat and they thought. All owls think a lot. I think we should all sit on my branch, said Sarah. And they did, all three together. Suppose she got lost, said Sarah. Or a fox got her, said Percy. I want my mommy, said Bill. And the baby owls closed their owl eyes and wished their owl mother would come. And she came. Soft and silent, she swooped through the trees to Sarah and Percy and Bill. Mommy, they cried, and they flapped and they danced and they bounced up and down on their branch. What's all the fuss? Their owl mother asked. You knew I'd come back. The baby owls thought, all owls think a lot. I knew it, said Sarah. And I knew it, said Percy. I love my mommy, said Bill. Bear's wondering, did you think the owl mother would come back? Lots of yeses. Well, Bear says he knew she would come back as soon as she possibly could. Why, Bear? Bear says because she loves her children. Bear also hopes you come back soon for more adventures in family love. Bye for now. Please subscribe. Hi there, you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky, and this is our friend Bear, who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Do you ever feel a little scared about leaving home? Some say yes, Bear, especially when they have to start school. Well, Chester Raccoon feels sad about going to school so he's asking if he can stay home. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see if the secret Chester's mother wants to tell him will help Chester decide to go. The Kissing Hand by Audrey Penn. Chester Raccoon stood at the edge of the forest and cried, I don't want to go to school, he told his mother. I want to stay home with you. I want to play with my friends and play with my toys and read my books and swing on my swing. Please, may I stay home with you? Mrs. Raccoon took Chester by the hand and nuzzled him on the ear. 
Sometimes we all have to do things we don't want to do, she told him gently. Even if they seem strange and scary at first. But you will love school once you start. You'll make new friends and play with new toys, read new books, and swing on new swings. Besides, she added, I know a wonderful secret that will make your nights at school seem as warm and cozy as your days at home. Chester wiped away his tears and looked interested. A secret? What kind of secret? A very old secret, said Mrs. Raccoon. I learned it from my mother, and she learned it from hers. It's called the kissing hand. The kissing hand, asked Chester. What's that? I'll show you. Mrs. Raccoon took Chester's left hand and spread open his tiny fingers into a fan. Leaning forward, she kissed Chester right in the middle of his palm. Chester felt his mother's kiss rush from his hand up his arm and into his heart. Even his silky black mask tingled with a special warmth. Mrs. Raccoon smiled. Now, she told Chester, whenever you feel lonely and need a little loving from home, just press your hand to your cheek and think, Mommy loves you. Mommy loves you. And that very kiss will jump to your face and fill you with toasty warm thoughts. She took Chester's hand and carefully wrapped his fingers around the kiss. Now, do be careful not to lose it, she teased him. But don't worry, when you open your hand and wash your food, I promise the kiss will stick. Chester loved his kissing hand. Now he knew his mother's love would go with him wherever he went, even to school. That night, Chester stood in front of his school and looked thoughtful. Suddenly, he turned to his mother and grinned. Give me your hand, he told her. Chester took his mother's hand in his own and unfolded her large, familiar fingers into a fan. Next, he leaned forward and kissed the center of her hand. Now you have a kissing hand too, he told her. And with a gentle goodbye and I love you. Chester turned and danced away. Mrs. Raccoon watched Chester scamper across a tree limb and enter school. And as the hoot owl rang in the new school year, she pressed her left hand to her cheek and smiled. The warmth of Chester's kiss filled her heart with special words. Chester loves you, it sang. Chester loves you. I love you. Bears wondering, do you think having a kissing hand would help you feel brave? Many want to try it, Bear. Just spread your fingers into a fan that can hold your parents' kiss. Now press your hand to your cheek and think of how they love you. Hmm, 
Would your mom or dad like having a kissing hand too? Well, Bear hopes you come back soon for more adventures in feeling loved and brave. Bye for now. Please subscribe. Hi there, you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky and this is our friend Bear who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Have you heard the news about the brand new Animobiles? No? Well, Bear says animals are cruising around in their own vehicles. Monkeys are racing on mopeds and cows are moving fast in cow cars. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see where all these animobiles are going. Animobiles, Animals on the Move by Maddie Frost. Some vehicles go vroom. Some animals say roar. Put them both together and find out what's in store. Racing over grassy fields, a tiger train is on a track. Families look out their windows as the wheels go clickety-clack. Under swooping jungle vines, monkey mopeds zoom with glee. One shouts out, let's race! I bet you can't catch me! Above the giant treetops, Parrot planes zigzag and glide. Time to boost the engine and snatch fruit along the ride. On shores of sunny beaches, tractor turtles tread on sand. They're digging out safe places for the hatchlings up on land. Down beneath the river swims a salmon submarine. It glides against the current as it travels up the stream. On the open country roads, cow cars move in any weather. They stop and go for grass and always stick together. Cruising through the seas, seal ships float in perfect file. Finding spots to drop their anchors to go fishing for a while. The garden grooves to the beat as bee blimps buzz for hours. Their landing gear is ready. Time to rest upon the flowers. Deep below the grass and soil, a subway snake creeps for miles. Doors open, shut. Stand clear, it calls. Commuters wave and smile. Inside the quiet forest, a bear bus carries tired friends. They get ready with a yawn to fall asleep back in their dens.
Way up in the starry sky, bat balloons float through the night. They help each other navigate while enjoying moonlit flight. These passengers had so much fun in water, land, and sky. But the animals are on the go. So honk and say goodbye. Bear's wondering, would you like to go floating in bat balloons way up high in the starry night? Many yeses. Bear's asking, which animal bill would you choose to try? One that goes on land, water, or in the sky? Well, Bear also hopes you come back soon for more adventures in moving with the animals. Bye for now. Please subscribe. Hi there, you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky and this is our friend Bear who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Do you ever feel too little? Sometimes? Well, Titch is little, but he really wishes he could be big and do the cool things his big brother and sister do. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see if Titch can find out how to be big. Titch by Pat Hutchins. Titch was little. His sister Mary was a bit bigger. And his brother Pete was a lot bigger. Pete had a great big bike. Mary had a big bike. And Titch had a little tricycle. Pete had a kite that flew high above the trees. Mary had a kite that flew high above the houses. And Titch had a pinwheel that he held in his hand. Pete had a big drum. Mary had a trumpet. And Titch had a little wooden whistle. Pete had a big saw. Mary had a big hammer. And Titch held the nails. Pete had a big spade. Mary had a fat flower pot. But Titch had the tiny seed. And Titch's seed grew. And grew. And grew. Bear's wondering, did you think Titch's tiny seed would turn into a big plant? Many were surprised, Bear. Did Titch plant a seed that grew even bigger than his brother and sister? Yes. Do you think little Titch finally found one way to do something big? 
Hmm. Bear hopes you come back soon for more adventures in finding little ways to do big things. Bye for now. Please subscribe. Hi there, you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky and this is our friend Bear who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Do you think most owls sleep during the day or at night? Bear says if you said most owls sleep during the day, you're right. Well, this owl is trying to sleep during the day, but his friends who are wide awake are making too much noise. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see what owl will do. Good Night Owl by Pat Hutchins. Owl tried to sleep. The bees buzzed, buzz, buzz, and Owl tried to sleep. The squirrel cracked nuts, crunch, crunch, and Owl tried to sleep. The crows croaked, caw, caw, and Owl tried to sleep. The woodpecker pecked, rat-a-tat, rat-a-tat. An owl tried to sleep. The starlings chittered, twit, 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 twit. An owl tried to sleep. The jays screamed, ark, ark. An owl tried to sleep. The cuckoo called, cuckoo, cuckoo. An owl tried to sleep. The robin peeped, pip, pip. An owl tried to sleep. The sparrows chirped, cheep, cheep. An owl tried to sleep. The doves cooed, coo, coo. An owl tried to sleep. The bees buzzed, buzz, buzz. The squirrel cracked nuts, crunch, crunch. The crows croaked, caw, caw. The woodpecker pecked, rat-a-tat, rat-a-tat. The starlings chittered, twit, 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 twit. The jays screamed, ark, ark. The cuckoo called, cuckoo, cuckoo. The robin peeped, pip, pip. The sparrows chirped, cheep, cheep. The doves cooed, coo, coo. And Owl couldn't sleep. Then darkness fell and the moon came up and there wasn't a sound. Owl screeched. Screech! Screech! And woke everyone up. Bear's wondering, do you think the animals were surprised that Owl could make a noise? Well, Bear's also asking, 
do you think the birds, squirrel, and bee will be quiet during the day now when Al needs to sleep? Hmm, Bear isn't sure, but he hopes you come back soon for more adventures in staying asleep. Bye for now. Please subscribe. Hi there, you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky, and this is our friend Bear, who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Do you think cats and dogs can be friends? Some say yes, and some no, Bear. <laughs> well, Widget the dog has to make friends with some cats because he really needs a home. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see what Widget does to make friends with a house full of cats. Widget by Lynn Rossiter McFarland. Widget was a little stray dog. He had no home. He had no friends. He was very sad and lonely. He was cold and hungry, too. He saw a house at the end of a road. There was a door just his size. He peeked inside. He saw six cats. Six warm beds and six bowls of hot food. Widget dove for the food and straight into Mrs. Diggs. Why, you poor thing, said Mrs. Diggs. I wish you could stay, but I'm afraid the girls just can't stand dogs. Widget looked at the girls. He looked at Mrs. Diggs. She seemed so nice. Widget really wanted to stay. Meow, said Widget. Mrs. Diggs laughed. Well, girls, she said, what do you think? The girls puffed up. Widget puffed up. The girls hissed and spit. Widget hissed and spit. The girls growled. Widget purred, played with a toy mouse, and used the litter box. The girls stopped growling. They were confused. Widget looked like a dog. He smelled like a dog. But he acted like a cat. Mrs. Diggs set a bowl down for Widget. Widget started eating. He never took his eyes off the girls. The girls started eating. They never took their eyes off Widget. Why, you fit right in, said Mrs. Diggs to Widget. And Widget did fit right in. From that day on, Widget ran with the girls, played with the girls, and curled up with the girls. In fact, he had so much fun with the girls, he sometimes forgot he was a dog. One day, Mrs. Diggs tripped on a toy and fell down. She didn't move. Widget and the girls were worried. 
They meowed for help. No one came. They screeched. They yowled. They caterwauled for help. No one came. Then Widget barked for help. The girls were shocked. <coughs> Then they barked for help too. Everyone came. Mrs. Diggs was saved. I didn't know you had a dog, said the neighbor. Oh, yes, said Mrs. Diggs. It's nice to have a dog. Right, girls? Oh, yes, the girls agreed. Here's wondering. Do you think the cats were happy Widget acted like a cat most of the time? Yes, but do you also think the cats were happy that they could act like a dog? Yes. Well, Bear's asking, do you wish cats and dogs would try to act like each other sometimes? <laughs> Bear also hopes you come back soon for more adventures with cats and dogs. Bye for now. Please subscribe. Hi there, you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky and this is our friend Bear who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Do you ever feel grumpy and wonder if your parent still loves you? Sometimes? Well, Small is feeling that way. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see what large will tell small. No Matter What by Debbie Gliori. Small was feeling grim and grumpy. Good grief, said Large. What is the matter? I'm grim and grumpy, said Little Small, and I don't think you love me at all. Oh, Small, said Large, grumpy or not, I'll always love you, no matter what. If I were a grumpy grizzly bear, would you still love me? Would you still care? Of course, said Large. Bear or not, I'd always love you, no matter what. But if I turned into a squishy bug, would you still love me and give me a hug? Of course, said Large. Bug or not, I'd always love you, no matter what. No matter what, said Small with a smile. What if I were a crocodile? I'd still hold you close and snug and tight and tuck you up in bed each night. But does love wear out? Does it break or bend? Can you fix it or patch it? Does it mend? With time together, a smile and a kiss, love can be mended with things like this. But what about when you're far away? Does your love go too or does it stay?
Look up at the stars. They're far, far away, but their light reaches us at the end of each day. It's like that with love. We may be close, we may be far, but our love still surrounds us wherever we are. Here's wondering, do your mom and dad love you no matter what? Many yeses, Bear. Well, Bear says parents love you forever. Whatever you do, wherever you go, no matter what. Bear also hopes you come back soon for more adventures in feeling loved. Bye for now. Please subscribe. Hi there, you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky and this is our friend Bear who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Do you like to know that your mom and dad love you no matter what? Lots of yeses, Bear. <laughs> well, so does Little Elephant. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see how Little Elephant's mom and dad love him all the time, every day. No Matter What by Emma Dodd. Sometimes you're happy. Sometimes you're sad. Sometimes you're good. Sometimes you're bad. Sometimes you're scared. Sometimes you're brave. Sometimes you don't know how to behave. Sometimes you're dirty. <laughs> Sometimes you're clean. Sometimes you're kind. Sometimes you're mean. But no matter what you say or do, it makes no difference. I love you. Bear's wondering, do you always remember that your parents love you, no matter what? Well, Bear says our parents' love is special. It never stops or runs out. Bear also hopes you come back soon for more adventures in family love. Bye for now. Please subscribe. Hi there, you found us here. It's story time with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky and this is our friend Bear who loves reading along with you. Bear has a question for you. Do you ever play outside when it gets dark? Some do, some don't Bear. Well, the moon jumpers want to see what it's like to play outside in the moonlight. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see if they can jump up and touch the moon. The Moon Jumpers by Janice May Udry. The sun is tired. It goes down the sky into the drowsy hills. The sunflowers lean. They fall asleep to dream of tomorrow's sun. 
The moon is up. Now the owl is awake in the pine tree. The cat steps out and walks around the edge of the garden and then goes out the gate. Ooh, 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 ooh. Beyond the gate, the road winds into darkness. The cool night shadows gather around the house. In the window, the lamp is lit for mother and father. Down in the sandbox, the pail and the shovel are left by the castle door. The goldfish play with the moonfish deep in the lily pool. Those old frogs begin to croak and the fireflies come from the woods. The giant moth zooms by looking for the moonflowers. The warm night wind tosses our hair. The wind chimes stir. And we all dance barefooted. Over and over the grass, we play tag in and out with the wind and with each other. We climb the tree just to be in a tree at night. And we make a little camp and pretend we're on an island for the night. We make up songs and poems, and we turn somersaults all over the grass. We tell ghost stories and holler boo under the window. We jump and jump over and over and higher and higher, but nobody has ever touch the moon. We run and run around the house and the balloon of a moon grows and grows. A giant shadow comes. We hide. Bigger and bigger he comes across the lawn. It's coming! The giant! He lights his pipe and he laughs. Father is the giant taking a walk to look at his roses. Mother calls from the door. Children! Oh, children! But we're not children. We're the moon jumpers. It's time, she says. Good night, moon. The bed is white and cool and the pillow as soft as the night. The moon sails on up the sky and we fall asleep and dream of tomorrow's sun. Here's wondering. Do you think the moon ever looks like a big balloon you can jump up and reach? <laughs> yes. Are you a moon jumper? Some are and some want to try. And would you also like to dance barefoot on the cool dark grass in the moonlight and tell ghost stories? Well, Bear would and he's also hoping you come back soon for more Adventures in the Moonlight. Bye for now. Please subscribe.